Almost a year ago, I recorded this video up here, and uh, this was uh, called Make Your Own Table of Contents Slide, and it took advantage of multi-state objects and buttons, specifically smart shape buttons, if I recall correctly. And the other thing is that, um, you know, I gave some instructions on how to create um, um, a visited state using advanced actions. So I've been exploring Captivate 2017 now for a couple of weeks and stumbled across this feature. It wasn't documented in any of the documentation that I saw. And I thought I would share it with you guys today. It's really, really a game changer as far as uh, navigation controls are concerned. So let's take a look here. So I've got Captivate, um, Captivate 2017 up here on my screen and I've created four slides. Uh, the first slide is going to be that table of contents feature, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and uh, the subsequent slides are chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, with a return to menu button on each. And there's no advanced actions on this project whatsoever. The return to menu is simply uh, jump to slide one, and of course the same thing for the table of contents. These are just jump to slide two, jump to slide three, and jump to slide four. And what I was doing was looking at the buttons themselves. And what I discovered by going into state view, I went to add a new state, something that I was going to customize myself. So I clicked on the new state option and it said inbuilt state and it gave me the option of visit it. So instead of just the normal rollover and down state, there's now a fourth inbuilt state for regular buttons called visited. So I clicked on OK and realized that what that does is it gives me a visited state. Now in the past, if I wanted to create a visited state for a multi-state object, I, I would have to do some code behind that to make it function. So let's, uh, let's first of all give this button a visual change when it's visited. I'll make it, um, I'll make it a little more transparent so it looks grayed out. We'll exit that state there. Make sure you uh, check off retain state on slide revisit. That's important for this type of uh, function to work. And I'll do the same thing for the chapter two button. Um, I'll do it differently here. I'll click the plus button next to the object state dropdown and we'll add visited to that one as well. Again, change the opacity so it looks different. Check off retain state on slide revisit. And do the same thing for the third button as well. Uh, and again, re retain state there. And let's make that mostly transparent. Click away to go back to normal. So now we have uh, visited states on all of these chapters. Let's do a preview and see what impact that has. Again, remember, there's no advanced action in this project whatsoever. So we'll just preview HTML5 in browser. So here's our chapter one, chapter two table of contents slide. I've got my rollover effects. It looks fantastic. Let's click on chapter one. Let's say I read all the content that's on this screen and then I go return to menu. Awesome, it's grayed out now. It lets me know that chapter one has been visited. Let's go to chapter two now. Cool, so let's see what happens when I go back to the table of contents if it retains the first chapter as well as the second chapter. Awesome, works exactly as you'd expect it. Chapter three. So again, remember, no advanced action required to do this whatsoever. This is now inbuilt functionality for buttons used as smart shapes. Um, I think this is a real game changer. It, uh, it democratizes uh, Adobe Captivate for a lot of people because there's many people out there who shy away from advanced actions because it's complicated or difficult. Um, and this makes it easy for everybody to do some really interesting stuff with Captivate. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. 
Follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.